Good morning, Mackenzie Johnston with Tri-State Livestock News, bringing you your Wednesday morning headlines concerning fair cattle markets. Sponsored by Sand Hills Beef Company. Eat like a rancher. America first means buying directly from the producer. Be the change. To learn about everything Sand Hills Beef Company has to offer, head on over to their website, sandhillsbeefco.com. Also sponsored by RCAF USA, fighting for independent American cattle producers. To sign the petition for the beef checkoff referendum, you can head on over to RCAF's website, or you can sign it at www.checkoffvote.com. According to AgWeb, there was bipartisan support on Tuesday as the Senate Agriculture Committee voted unanimously to recommend Tom Vilsack be confirmed as USDA Secretary of Agriculture to the full Senate. Vilsack served as USDA Secretary for all eight years with Barack Obama while he was president. During the, hearing, Vil, during the hearing, Vilsack addressed many issues from coronavirus to climate change to country of origin labeling, cool, and biofuels. Drovers has also reported on Tom Vilsack's hearing. During the hearing on Tuesday, he said he, uh, he is willing to consider re-implementation of country of origin labeling cool regulations for meat products. Nebraska Senator Deb Fisher asked him if he believes that the current labeling policy adequately informs consumers. Vilsack respondents responded saying, if it's the same policy as it was four years ago when I left, the answer is no. Vilsack said while he was agriculture secretary under President Obama, the USDA made every possible effort to try to create better transparency and better information for consumers because consumers obviously want to know where their food comes from. He stated that the Obama administration uh, tried to uh, strengthen cool on three separate occasions, but failed because of Canadian challenges to the law through the World Trade Organization, the WTO. South Dakota Senator uh, John Thune asked Vilsack about the extreme volatility in the cattle markets and what changes he plans to make to strengthen the integrity of the cattle market. Vilsack responded saying that through the USDA, he would make sure the cattle markets are open, fair, and transparent. Vilsack also expressed the need for more processing capacity so that our food system isn't so reliant on such a small number of processors. Reuters has reported that on Tuesday, Impossible Foods reported that it would cut prices on its fake meat patties by 20% at U.S. grocery stores. The decrease in prices arrives as the plant-based protein maker increases production with a larger plan ultimately, uh, a, larger, a larger plan to ultimately undercut ground beef prices. Impossible Foods along with Beyond Meat have seen respectable growth over the last year as consumers make the shift away from chicken, pork, and beef-based diets over concerns about their health, their environmental impact, and animal welfare. The Impossible Burger will now be priced at $5.49 per burger in about 17,000 U.S. grocery stores. Impossible Foods also plans to implement these price cuts at retail stores in Canada, Singapore, and Hong Kong. Drovers has reported that on January, January 28th, the Center for Food Safety, CFS, filed a legal brief challenging the U.S. Food and Drug Administration's, the FDA's, approval in 2019 of soy leg hemoglobin, a color additive used to make Impossible Foods' Impossible Burger appear to bleed like real meat. Soy leg hemoglobin is produced in genetically engineered yeast and is modeled on a protein found in the roots of soybeans. Bill Fries, science policy analyst for CFS, said in the release that the FDA approved the color additive without conducting any of the long-term animal studies that are needed to determine whether or not the product harms human health. Fries and the CFS find this worrisome since a number of potential adverse effects were detected in a short-term rat trial. Some of these adverse effects include disruption of reproductive cycles and reduced uterine weights in females, biomarkers of anemia, reduced clotting ability, and kidney problems. 
According to the CFS, the enthusiasm around meatless products cannot be used for an, ex for an excuse to skirt food safety laws. This introduction of Impossible Foods as products highlights a troubling, de uh, troubling deregulatory trend that prioritizes corporate profits over public health and safety, CFS stated. Drovers has also reported that a recent Drovers Pulse poll has discovered that ranchers are split on the topic of a nationwide traceability system in the cattle industry. 49% believe that the industry needs a nationwide traceability system and 51% are against a nationwide system. A total of 214 individuals responded to the poll, mostly from the Midwest, but the East Coast was also well represented. National Beef Wire reported yesterday that Choice Box Beef ended the day at 236.76, that was up $1.08, and Select Box Beef ended the day at 225.04, and that was down 55 cents. That is all I have for you guys uh, for news today. I hope everyone gets to enjoy our last day of decent weather before uh, before the cold sets in. It's supposed to get pretty darn cold here in central Nebraska over the next week. Have yourself a wonderful Wednesday, and I will see you guys tomorrow morning.